What's up, guys? Today, we're heading to my favorite place on planet Earth. Let me share it with you. So here we are. We're in Dusky Sound in Fiordland. We're out on the water here on the flightless and I'm running my yearly photography trip with the guys at Pure Salt. For four nights and five days and basically all the fjords here are our playground. This is our backyard to explore. So we've got the vessel, we've got a small tender to go out on shore if we need to. We've got fishing rods so we can catch ourselves some dinner. It's all about reacting to the conditions, reacting to the light. In this part of the world, there is no shortage of atmosphere just those spontaneous moments which just arise out of nowhere and take your breath away even in the first half an hour we've just had some beautiful tree layers and mist and atmosphere so we're looking forward to a fun few days ahead Little bit of rain today, perfect for waterfall hunting. This is the type of place that on a sunny day, there might be one waterfall. And then when there's a bit of rain around, there's innumerable waterfalls. So we're gonna spend the afternoon hunting along and finding some waterfalls and cascades. And then there's some beautiful mountain layers, plenty of atmosphere as well. So it's our first day done and dusted. It's a shorter day, the first day. And um, even though it's a shorter day, we've managed to pretty much experience all four seasons and a, a great variety of different conditions and scenery. No major standout moments, but just plenty of those little ones that just kept on popping up and making all of us say, wow, wow, wow. And we managed to see dolphins, penguins, and about 500,000 seagulls amongst it all as well. So we're gonna anchor up here in the cove for tonight. It's completely glassy and just looking absolutely beautiful and I just can't wait to see what tomorrow brings. Day two. Love this time of year because it's quarter past eight, the sun still has not come up. I think we're in for a bit, lot of uh, varying conditions today, which is just what you want here. So we're just going to start the engines up now and start making our way along. And hopefully today we're going to explore some cascades, get into the forest a little bit. But hey, who knows, we'll see what happens. shortage of waterfalls in Fiordland but some are definitely better than others. We have the luxury of being able to just go up close to any that we like and then going onto shore to try and photograph them. So we're going to head over to this big boy now and see what we can do. walk up the side of the creek now and try to get as close as we can to this waterfall and see if there's a nice composition up there. Alright, 
So we come down to this nice cove here and it's just been a, a beautiful combination of incredible reflections with the trees. And now we've just come ashore. We've got a hidden waterfall tucked away up here, which we're going to explore shortly. But for now, we're just looking up at this mountain, all the granite there and the beautiful river that's flowing through. Lots of bubbles in the water there, which is looking really nice with the slow shutters. So, so much to explore. I'm excited. We're going to pick up all the foam as it's rushing past us, do a slow shutter speed, and it'll all blend together and just create a nice leading line. Curiosity's got the better. We're going to follow up the creek and see what we find. Hopefully some, not only a waterfall, but hopefully some green, some plant life to frame it all up. Let's go have a look. Sometimes it's not always about the big obvious main subject, but just those finer details. We've got this waterfall here, which is quite nice, but there's not really a, a very strong composition to lead the eye to the fall. But what's really jumped out to me is the bubbles and foam on the ground. And I think they're gonna be some of the best images. So let's go take a quick look now at just concentrating on those finer, more intimate details in the big landscape. here is a Chatham mollyhawk. It's an endangered species. Well, not really, but we'll say that anyway. Get a few of them around here. Always nice to have some birds flying through the photos. They never cooperate though, of course. feed many people. Hey, at least I caught something. What have you caught? I caught a shark. <laughs> I think you caught a whale. He's on the something big. <laughs> it's, it's strong, eh? So we have a bit of a rule well, here. He who catches the biggest fish does the dishes for the day. Oh, oh awesome. Oh, so uh, late last night, we made our way up the wet jacket arm and we're getting into some of my absolute favourite areas of Fjordland. This arm here, and then the ones that we're going to go up later on. Since we got in in the dark, it's quite cloudy, the guys haven't really been able to see much, but here we are now, pre-sunrise. We're just getting that beautiful glimpse of the mountains, the reflections. Everyone's getting excited. I think Helen's already filled up a memory card. <laughs> no shame, it's all good. Cruising along this morning, we've just had sunrise, had the sky light up, it's had some nice pinks, you know, got this beautiful fog and mist hanging around. It should just get better and better as the sun finally hits all of that and just brings the place to life.
going on. It's midday and we need a bit of protein for dinner. So a few of the guys are gonna go look for some crayfish. I'm gonna jump in the kayak, have a paddle around, do a bit of exploration. Got a beautiful sunny day, no better time for it. What do you reckon, Billy? Sound good, mate? All good. It's not all about photography, especially on these trips, but just as I've been paddling along around the island here, it kind of reminds me of, especially as a landscape photographer, the importance of just being able to get out and appreciate the outdoors and not always have the camera in hand. When you do that, I feel like it gives you a really good reset, and in that process, it can sometimes give you a renewed sense of inspiration as well. So, something to keep in mind, fellas. going to go for a swim but uh, I can't now it's not that it's too cold for me but so those jellyfish are going to keep me out of the water all right starting to get pretty excited we've come up the head of the Vancouver arm so break sea sound comes in and branches off and we've gone up the Vancouver arm this is one of my absolute favorite parts of Fjordland I've photographed this area multiple times from the air and from the ground however from down here there's a specific angle looking up at these big peaks which has kind of got away from me the last few years because of the low hanging cloud and fog and it just ruined the visibility so i'm hoping this afternoon is the day that we're going to be able to get the light on the peaks and see them we'll go off go find a little bit of shoreline and beach and hopefully just frame it all up and get that last light of the afternoon coming in Nothing's set in stone though, it does change very quick here but at the moment it's looking promising and we're just starting to get into the right area now. So definitely uh, getting excited, just been thinking about coming back here for 12 months now, I just absolutely love it. So raw, rugged, untouched, this is the real Fiordland, the real essence of the New Zealand landscape right here. It's beautiful, can't complain. I'm just being greedy. What I really would like to do is combine the rainforest with the ocean, with the mountains, because to me that's what just makes Fjordland so special. It's really difficult though, it's just the way that the, the shoreline is here, the tree arrangement, the ferns, it's just so chaotic and messy and yeah, really struggling. Probably spent a good half an hour now just trying to find just some kind of natural window, natural frame, a few ferns in the front leading us to the background but it's just been an absolute mission so at the moment just looking at these trees here guiding us through i just like to really add those multiple layers we can walk right down to the water's edge get some rocks water reflection sure it's a nice photo but i just really want to incorporate the the greens that's what is just so good about here so haven't given up yet but it's been quite a challenge so in this scenario i was just saying to the guys this is where i do um a safety shot what i mean by that is let's just go get the most obvious easy shot which is in this case the reflection it's still a beautiful image you get that that way you you know you've got something at least so if you don't find what else you're looking for at least you're going to go home with something and not panic at the end get a couple of stones in the front for the depth and then the water and just make sure you're not cutting off the reflection at all Was there a lesson? That's right. Start off with wet socks and then it doesn't matter when they get wet later on. But when it comes to the framing in the foreground, I just feel like balance is such a powerful thing. So we're using the rocks down here to help frame up the reflection of the peaks in the front. It was just kind of critical in, in my mind anyway, that if we've got 
some rock on the right, then we want to get some on the left, and then that way we're creating a natural little channel there for the eye to flow through to the background. Oh, here comes Mike. Alright guys, I thought I'd just give you a quick look around on our home the last few days on board the flightless here. So let me give you a quick look around. Right here we've got the hot tub. And I suppose the views are not too bad either. Helipad. So this is where the tour begins and ends, right here. Come through. She's running away. <laughs> oh hello, I didn't see you there. <laughs> Come on through. This is Anna. Come on. Hello. Anna's been on board the flightless for quite some time and she uh, makes life very difficult for everyone on board. No, not <laughs> That's really. That's true. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we've got the wheelhouse up here, and this is where all the action happens, really. We're going to go downstairs now. Thanks, Anna. See you later on. All right. <laughs> so come down. I'll show you where all the good stuff happens down here. This is the living quarters. This is Beck. Say hello, Beck. Hello. Just cleaning the toilets right now. It's good fun. <laughs> One of the bedrooms in here. No. I snuggle up to no, Rolf each well. night. He cooks the dinners and then he keeps me warm at night. Thank yep. you. That's Appreciate all I have it. To do. No. <laughs> Alright, come back upstairs. <laughs> we have to ask this. He right. down the stairway saying this is where all the good stuff happens. <laughs> yeah, I know. I need your question, Matt. Here we are in the saloon. Got extensive library here and some good company as well. More importantly though, down this end, the coffee. Coffee, hot drinks, everything that keeps us happy. Here's the galley. Galley? Galley. Galley. And this is where Rolf, where's Rolf? We need him back up here. I think this is probably where the good stuff happens though. Right? We can all agree on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too excited. Here we are on the back deck. This is where we eat our meals together. It's a little bit messy at the moment, but it's really nice to eat together, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'll tell you what, the food is on another level. Downstairs, there's a laundry, so you can wash and dry your clothes off. And then out the back here, most importantly, really, the tender. And this is what we use to get to shore and be able to explore so many different locations out there. So when we're traveling along, boats moving along the fjords or out near the open ocean we can pretty much circle around the entire vessel so if we're not going to go to shore we can just shoot very easily from the boat itself and voila we've got the fishing rods here as well do a bit of fishing all right so that's it that's a flightless you could easily be on here pretty much forever really it's got everything you need on board and there's just so much beautiful scenery out there to explore Fjordland has this way of just kind of calling you in. There's this sense of mystery with the atmosphere. And I feel like it's just like this voice saying, come, come and have a look. It's always felt like that to me. I love the element of surprise. So this morning, we're gonna track down the arm here and see what we find, get amongst that atmosphere and explore some creeks and streams. yesterday a few creeks flowing out of this valley so we'll go for a walk and see what we find so it's all about 
the harmony and the chaos, isn't it? Just finding that one subject that just seems to stand out from the rest. That's what we've got right here. And then just finding a way to frame it up. Foreground's critical, just cleans up the environment and helps the eye just flow straight to the background there. Photographing the forest and creek like this, the one thing that I'm always looking for is where the river really narrows in. And that way the trees either side end up arching over. It just looks fantastic. When you get low and close to some foreground and the river itself, you have that linear perspective where it's wide and then it just tapers off into the distance and that just pulls the eye through the frame. So the main thing was just finding that narrow section, white cascades, which we've got plenty of now where the water's bouncing over the rocks and then just finding the nice little section of trees and ferns. It's just an absolute paradise. It's probably been the highlight of the trip for me so far, just being amongst all this. Absolutely love it. Not a bad way to spend the morning. Probably uh, time to head back to the boat now. Absolutely glorious. Five years out here Five so years. far. Yeah. yeah, working in Dusky means we are in the largest fjord, and it is one of the it is the one of the least populated fjords. If you know what I mean, there's a, not a whole lot of operators that work down here, and it's very hard to get to without likes of a boat or, or a helicopter or seaplane sort of thing. How many other people boats are around? Probably less than a, a dozen, right? Realistically, yeah, realistically, and then yeah. the southern fuel is definitely less than a dozen. Yeah, there's probably, I mean, at the moment, there's like three of us in here. Yeah, yeah. so we've got this vast, expansive wilderness, the biggest national park in the whole country, and there's just a little handful of us out here exploring it all. It's, uh, yeah. it's pretty, <laughs> pretty good, really. Yeah, pretty awesome. People are cool, the place is cool, no, uh, no cell phones is pretty cool. I think, um, one thing that I like about running workshops is you know, I'll take people to places that I might have been to a hundred times, but when you see their face light up, it just reignites it for you again. Do you find that as well? It's pretty much why, why you do it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So we've uh, just come ashore to another beach, going up a big dense valley here following the river up and it looks like there's some beautiful cascades off into the distance. When you're shooting the creek or the cascade it's all about trying to find the portions that have the white ripples so when you do a slow shutter it just smooths out gives a really nice texture and creates some leading lines so although the whole creek is quite nice to look at from a photography perspective really looking for those portions of the white ripples and there's a big bunch up here and a few mini waterfalls. Love it, absolutely love it. Just untouched, raw, rugged, oozing with atmosphere. So it's the uh, final sunset of the trip and we just stopped in the fjord looking back to the southwest. We've got a beautiful natural gradient. You can see each individual valley and it's just spectacular. Quintessential fjord land. Hoping for a little bit of light and color in the sky. Might not happen, we'll see. Got to endure another fine three-course meal again, I guess, don't we? Come and have a look at the sunrise. <laughs> Final morning of the trip, being blessed with an epic sunrise that's been building. So we're going to go to shore now got a bit of a decision to make. If we want to face the richest colour, we're going to be looking up the valley there, but the main big boys, the big peaks, are back this direction. But thankfully, on a sunrise like this, with that high cloud, the light should just spread all the way across. So we'll go get to shore, try find some nice foreground, some reflections to look back towards the mountains there. Should get a, a pretty nice pop of light and colour. So 
we're just on the shoreline here, the sky is just blowing up. Mountain range is just starting to catch that light, so now the, the whole challenge is to find the composition, the framing, getting those nice foreground elements. I'm a sucker for trying to combine the whole environment, so I'd love to incorporate the trees and the ferns if possible. So now is that time. Don't have long either, so it's a bit of adrenaline going on. It's been a pretty incredible five days. I feel like we've had just about everything you could ask for as a landscape photographer. Sunshine, rain, atmosphere, layers, trees, mountains, the ocean, you name it. It's pretty spectacular. And hopefully you can see why I truly love it out here in this rugged, wild wilderness. If you'd like to join us in the future on one of these trips, please just get in touch, send me an email. Otherwise, thanks again for checking out the video. See you in the next one.